IBM India Software Labs had come to our campus interview uh, just like Fidelity, right? And uh, unfortunately, I did not make, uh, I, I was not even allowed to uh, take the interview because the cutoff was 70% and I had 69.6%. Is it IBM every techie's dream company? But what does it take to be in a company like IBM? In today's interview, we meet Sharat Atre. He started his engineering in Fidelity Investment, then in Nokia, Ericsson, and now he is working in IBM. What made him embark in such an interesting journey? Let's find out. So, Sharat, tell us about yourself. Where do you come from and why did you decide to do engineering? I do hold a degree with uh, in computer science and engineering. I did my uh, bachelor's uh, in RV College of Engineering, one of the prestigious institutions. And uh, recently I did my pro postgraduate uh, diploma in data science. Before that I did my diploma in computer science. So everything in my life uh, when it comes to engineering revolves around computer science. I was introduced to computers uh, most probably when I was in fifth grade and I was introduced to uh, basic programming language, uh, Fortran. It, it was pretty fascinating for me at, uh, by then and, uh, and that's how I, I started cultivating uh, interest in uh, computers. It is that field where one can uh, actually solve real life or real world problems. Fresh out of college, you started working with Fidelity Investment and it was you worked as a like associate software engineer what That's was right. like was it through like college placement fidelity investments had come in as uh, one of the recruiters and it was a fabulous experience uh, then uh, i'm talking about almost uh, one and a half decades back close to 14 years back and uh, the trend was totally different in terms of how we got interviewed how we prepared ourselves we had a placement cell we had placement coordinators and, and typically there was a pattern then, so we don't see the, those kind of interview patterns anymore. But yes, I was campus picked by uh, Fidelity Investments and, and it, was, it was a memorable experience for, for any engineering student to get campus picked. Uh, and, uh, and even before you have actually completed your engineering, you, you have your job offer, that's a wonderful feeling. So your next job was in Nokia and there you were like an R&D engineer. How was the role? different from what you were like doing in Fidelity and uh, what are the new things that you learned in this job? All my career I have worked only on two domains. One is the finance domain which I'm still currently working on. The other one is the telecom domain. From a work per se itself, uh, again because it was an R&D, research and development, we got to work on all the cutting edge technologies, right? Back then uh, there was no 5G yet, it was still in its incubation. But I got my hands on working uh, in several projects, which was hot then, which was called LTE. You might have seen in, your, in all our mobile phones, long-term evolution, right? So the uh, LTE network, the, the network switches, the, the softwares and the uh, software which are required for the routers and uh, the network equipment and whatnot. The, the, the work, work was very challenging and uh, there were uh, a bunch of very cool, bright engineers whom, who, whom I got to work with in uh, Nokia R&D and it was totally fun. So you said that there was like two uh, separate like things that you were always interested in. One was finance and another one was telecom. So then after Nokia, then you were in Ericsson where you were again a software engineer. How, well because these two are both in the similar domain, how do you think that Ericsson was different from Nokia? There was no much difference between uh, the work itself and uh, I don't have much to comment on the Ericsson because I had a very short stint uh, which was close to only six yeah. months uh, and mm -hmm. the entire India team moved to Ireland right and that, that's how I, I wanted to uh, look for something which is in Bangalore and uh, that's how I, I happened to uh, uh, get into IBM uh, India Software Labs. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is a story to it, right? So IBM India Software Labs had come to our campus interview uh, just like Fidelity, right? And uh, unfortunately, I did not make, uh, I, I was not even allowed to uh, 
take the interview because the cut off was 70% and i had 69.6% and i still had two two semesters to go uh, but then i i had a crazy fight with the hr that you you still have to give me a chance and because we have two semesters to go and that that's when i i started uh, uh, thinking about joining ibm isl uh, as my dream company and uh, uh, so that helped me shift from ericsson to uh, india software labs uh, at that juncture of my uh, career so uh, you are currently working at ibm so tell us about like uh, you said uh, you have all it gave us a little bit of hint about the work but both the work and work culture how is it like totally different from what you were doing before ibm is 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 a giant company uh, on par with the likes of the amazons and the googles and uh, the microsofts of the world right and uh, i was i was always part of i was hired uh, to be part of india software labs so the labs again can be thought of as a, a, a research and development uh, wing of ibm so we do have a irl which is india research labs which is totally into research but we uh, in isl we get to research and also do the uh, development part as well so uh, i am part of uh, this uh, platform or the solution called as financial crimes insight right so the name is a giveaway so we develop solutions for financial bfsi uh, uh, related industries to identify to detect fraud right finance related fraud be it through surveillance uh, be it through uh, you might have heard of kyc know your customer so we we develop models we 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 use uh, many algorithms a combination of them and uh, th- this is the nature of work where where we utilize data science related technologies we work with a huge uh, loads of data to understand to come up with a pattern to identify if if there is a potential fraud uh, uh, at an individual basis or at a corporate or at an organization level and so on and so forth this is from a business per se what what we try to solve on a day to day basis from a technological per se uh, we are not sticking to a particular technology particular programming language uh, taking again our uh, solution as an example we have uh, uh, we have r we have scala we have python we have java right we adopt uh, uh, kubernetes uh, we are now we are on to openshift uh, red hat right so you name it and you you get to work uh in 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 that uh the hot space uh in labs uh versus other services companies where you are bound to uh work on a specific technology uh depending upon what customer wants uh, uh it is confined to what you are trying to solve but in our case it's and and in a development space right you you get to don multiple hats as part of your role right companies like ibm oracle microsoft amazon they give you opportunities to to be not just part of a specific team but to get to know the big picture and understand how you are trying to solve a business problem and how is it going to help the end users at the end of the day so how has your work and your work like that has got affected due to the current covid-19 situation and what do you think is the like in the short term and long term how is it going to affect the industry speaking from my experience what we have had these last few months right it has not affected from our delivery or being productive per se right the only place where it really affects is you cannot draw a line between your personal life versus your professional life and we are still getting used to it right so now that we are we are more productive the organizations do expect you to to be online round the clock even though we 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 are we are told that we we have to be considerate uh, 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 to the employees uh, including me that we will have we, we everybody are facing this pandemic and there's a sense of fear uh, uh, across and so on but uh, from a work per se i don't think it has affected much uh we are being more productive by the way and uh, and this is here this is uh, this is going to stay uh, here for a while right and i'm sure uh, going forward uh, the the culture of uh, uh going to office uh, will slowly fade out uh, at least for the it industry where uh, 
the 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 development teams uh, can uh, work from remote locations with all the technology in place where we can remotely connect virtual have virtual meetings uh, uh, and uh, as long as we are delivering uh, as per the expectations i don't think uh, we uh, we will be asked to uh, work from office uh, and that culture is going to go away very soon any suggestion that you have for current engineers who are in the current like colleges and they're probably a little fearful about the whole covid thing and they're thinking like will i get placed will i have a job so what is your uh, like overall advice to them my two cents to all the engineers out there is don't worry about the job the job will ha- the job will find you if you are rightly skilled so don't waste your time right be doing something which is relevant which is hot in this in this industry right try to solve business problems just pick up some use case and and get your hands dirty the more and more you try right the more experience you will get right you can stumble uh, for the first few times but all these are stepping stones and it will make you much much stronger than just a, 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 a not, not, than just being just a bookworm it was a very interesting interview and i am sure all the students who are watching this they have learned a lot from this thank you so much thank you punam good day